the EFSI is a new acronym meaning European Fund for Strategic Investment. It's, um, uh, as I said, new fund will be established by the end of June or late, latest in, uh, in July. Its lending capacity is around 60 billion in three years' time. It will lend um, money to private investment, not to public investment. Private or public-private partnership investment. It will um, concentrate on higher risk investment, meaning that it will lend more to small and medium-sized uh, companies because uh, SME sector is higher risk by definition. Also, it will uh, lend money to, to the investment which takes place in higher risk country or um, to investment which, uh, in which the return is not that sure or forceful. For instance, pilot projects of uh, new technologies or new energy technologies, piloting new energy technologies. So the new fund will um, go to the areas in which private money doesn't want to go alone. It's providing first loss guarantee, meaning that if there are losses, the fund will take the first hit. So the basic idea behind the fund is to mobilize private money, not to replace, replace private money, but mobilize private money to the, uh, to the areas of business or areas, uh, geographical areas to which, in which it cannot carry on its, um, the risk itself. So it's sharing the risk. So we try to mobilize private money as much as possible. The project pipeline means the public marketplace to which public and private project promoters can bring the uh, investment uh, plans. And the European Investment Bank will analyze those plans and uh, they kind of give the, current, the European guarantee that this plan is economically viable and you can see the risk and it, it will say that okay there is sufficient amount of information for private investor to to understand uh, what kind of investment investment this is about it doesn't necessarily get any public support or financing but uh, it's also possible but but basically it's a project pipeline for private investors to find infrastructure projects from all over Europe. When talking about the investment plan, the new fund will be up and running by uh, the end of, uh, or by the end of June. Uh, depending on how fast the private sector can, uh, can uh, present the investment plans, uh, it tells how, how much uh, resources they can get from EFSI. But also we have to recognize the differences between the member states. Uh, some member states are more competitive than the others. But everybody can do reforms in order to strengthen their competitiveness. And, and if, if you imagine yourself as a CEO of energy company who is planning to do 100 million euros investment to energy sector, what do you want to know before you use your, your stakeholders, shareholders' money for the investment? You have to be aware, you, ha you have to make sure that regulatory surrounding doesn't change overnight. You have to make sure that uh, fiscal policy is uh, sound and solid, so there is no sudden tax increases and things like that. So, the member states can make a lot, can do a lot in order to attract private investors. We have to separate two different things. The first one is humanitarian uh, asylum seeking, uh, aside which there is illegal human trafficking. And then there are immigration, people who are coming, uh, looking, uh, com coming to work in Europe or study in Europe. There are three th different things. Um, at, at, or tackling illegal immigration or, or human uh, trafficking, we have to be active as a European Union in the other side of the Mediterranean. 
trying to stabilize the situation there and trying to help people to stay at their home country and, and kind of um, tackle the criminal, uh, the criminal movement or uh, criminalities around human trafficking. This is the first thing. The second thing is that we have to respect human rights and we have to take good care of those people who are, uh, who are seeking asylum from Europe. Um, and, and then the third part is the normal immigration uh, when coming to study or, or work. I'm, Europe is aging and we need more people to work. Otherwise, we have to lower our standard of living. So I would like to have more people outside from Europe to, to work and study in Europe and build our common destiny. I wouldn't like to build uh, barriers or fences around our continent. TTIP is very critical in, in, in many organizations, but uh, I, I find it very crucial for our economic growth. Imagine that we all are building internal market in Europe, but how about if we had a chance to widen or expand our internal market to the United States. There are another 300 million consumers if we just want to make a trade and investment agreement with them. And why not? It is not easy and there are problems. So those, those elements will make a permanent positive change to, to Europe. So what are the areas in which we need more integrated Europe or where we have some shortages? First of all, the single market area is a very obvious one. We have single market in various areas and countries like Croatia has benefited a lot of uh, single market. Your export has uh, increased signif significantly since you joined uh, to the EU and it shows the benefit of a single market. But there are also areas in which we don't have properly functioning harmonized single market, like a digital economy. If you are an entrepreneur who is selling digital products or digital services, you have fantastic single market in the United States, but unfortunately not in Europe. Still, we are in a situation in which we have 28 different copyright regimes, 28 different taxations, 28 different uh, data protection laws and it makes the entrepreneur's life and consumer's life very uh, complicated. If you travel to, to Paris and you would like to buy a box of uh, television channels and you are paying it by your own credit card, the shop seller immediately says that, by the way, your credit card, it, your credit card has been issued in Croatia and you cannot use this box. It's only for French. But if you want to buy a tie, it's very easy. So um, this just illustrates the current troubles we have in the digital world. Energy market is another one in which we don't have a single market. We don't have energy connectors between the countries and regulation in the energy sector varies a lot. So this is another sector in which we need more harmonized single market. Capital market is also very national, unfortunately, at the moment. And there again, we need more harmonized uh, regulation in order to make capital flow across the border and diversify uh, small and medium-sized enterprise financing uh, uh, opportunities. So the single market needs constant work. It's not accomplished because the um, world has changed since we last time concentrated on single market development, seriously. Because the world around is changed, the uh, world around of us is changing all the time. We have to modify Europe all the time. And we have to create fair, freer, more borderless Europe in order to give opportunities for our people, for entrepreneurs, for ideas, and also 
to tackle the challenges what we face anyway together because it's the most efficient way to do so.